So I'm gonna tell you how to use this collar and some safety tips you need to know from a veterinarian. I'm also a veterinarian, Dr. Ryan, a veterinarian and a veterinary behavior residency graduate. In case you're wondering, I blurred her face throughout the video because I think that some of the things that she's saying can cause her to be liable. And I'm still hoping that she would see my video and maybe take down her video or change the ways that she thinks. And before you ask, I actually did approach her twice and she deleted my comments and never reached out. Let's see what this veterinarian thinks about prime colors and what I think about him. So I have my dog Blue here, who is a 70 pound Dalmatian, who is super strong, but he's an extremely loving and obedient boy, and we use the prong collar. I'm already confused. If he's a good, loving, obedient dog, why are you using the prong collar? I mean, if he's that obedient, do you really need to use it? So it is a great training tool and this collar should be looked at as a tool itself. No, it's not a great training tool and it shouldn't be looked just as a training tool. You could say it's just a training tool about everything, about a shock collar, about a whip, about a bit, about many things that actually cause pain to the dog and today are considered inhumane. But stick around, I am going to mention what we scientifically know can be the result of using aversive methods, and I'm probably also going to give a few tips on what you can do instead of using a prong collar. The reason I don't like dogs wearing this all the time, and they should never wear it all the time, is because it's irritating to their skin and can cause hot spots or skin infections all the way around their neck because it does have these soft metal prongs that aren't comfortable to wear all the time. First, they're uncomfortable to wear, period. That's exactly what prong colors are meant to do, to cause discomfort to the dog. Second, what do you mean by soft metal prongs. They're really not soft. They're metal. They're really hard. You don't believe me? How about this picture? Or this picture? Or this picture? And here's another one. Yes, prong collars will not cause skin damage right away if you tag on them not too strong or if it's not on the dog for a long time. But they have a higher risk, a higher potential of causing damage than other tools that are much more effective. So a few reasons your veterinarian may recommend a prong collar may not just be training reasons. Even though pulling on the leash, making an unenjoyable walk where your shoulders feels like it's getting ripped out of the socket, that may be one reason you need the prong collar with your dog. But other reasons are if you have a tiny dog like a Cavalier or something that loves pulling, that dog puts pressure on their trachea and can irritate their throat and cause a worsening collapse of their trachea, which could be bad for the dog. Oh, so you're doing it because you care for the dog. That, that's good. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. But if you really care about the dog, why not use, and that's a tip for everyone, why not use a no-pull harness? Also, and that's something that all those that support using prong colors say, that the pressure that's applied by the prong collar is evenly distributed around the neck and it's not like poking just a specific spot and that's why it doesn't hurt that much. But if that's actually true, it will cause exactly the same things that a flat collar causes. It will also irritate the trachea, the windpipe. But if it's not true, if it's not evenly distributed and it is actually pressing on specific points, which is the case because that's why they get the skin damage, it can actually cause many more issues like pressing on nerves and blood vessels or the thyroid glands. Now, doctor and everyone else out there, if you really want to give advice about behavior, let's start by reading a little bit. I think that a good starter book for veterinarians is this one. I'll put the link in the description below in case you want to get this one. It's a pinch collar to stop them from pulling. They feel some discomfort and they don't want to pull anymore. That's exactly how it works. Okay, so we are thinking alike. It causes the dog discomfort 
or even pain, depending on how bad you pull on the leash. And that's what stops the dog from doing the behavior. So basically, you're punishing the dog for doing some behavior that you don't like the dog to do. For example, pulling. But you're not really addressing the cause for the dog to be pulling. And that's the bottom line. That's the problem of using those aversive techniques. If you don't deal with what's causing the behavior to begin with, then the dog is either going to continue doing the behavior or the dog is going to hide the behavior. But once the trigger for the behavior is high enough and it's over the dog's threshold, the dog is going to do the behavior without showing any signs, without giving any warning. And then a dog will pull you when you're not expecting it or the dog will jump and bite someone, a dog or a person, without even growling or lunging or doing anything before because he learned that every time he does the behavior, every time he gives that warning, he's going to be punished. Let's address the main question a lot of you guys are here for. Is the pinch collar inhumane yes. and does it cause a lot of pain to the dog? Yes. And the answer is no. Pain it's is yes. relative. So the pinch collar causes a pinch to your dog's neck. So I want you guys right now to pinch yourself in the arm. All right, that's uncomfortable and you want that pinch pain to stop. That is the same thing with this collar. No, it's not the same because for starters, don't pinch your arm. Pinch your neck. Second, you're not pinching only one spot. You're pinching a lot of spots all at the same time. So maybe bring a couple of people to pinch you at the same time on the neck and then tell me if it hurts or not. Third, when you're pinching yourself, you can control how hard you're doing it, how long you're doing it, where you're doing it, and you're aware that you're going to be pinched. Now you said that pain is relative. Yes. It is relative. Unexpected pain during a maybe stressful situation to begin with can hurt a lot more than expecting and not too bad of a pain to happen when you're all happy and relaxed at home. If you really want to see if prong colors hurt or not, put them on your neck and have someone else tag on them when you're not expecting it. No, but I'm kidding. Don't really try. I'm telling you, it hurts. If it didn't, it would have been working anyways. When the dog pulls, they feel the pinch and they want it to stop. And they even pay attention to you and ask, hey, what's going on? And that's what you want your dog to do without screaming at them and getting super frustrated. Yeah, no need to scream or get super frustrated. But think about it. You just hurt your dog. Your dog is turning toward you and like, what the heck? Why did you do that? And that's one of the issues. That's why we have studies showing us that it can actually affect the human animal bond. And I'm going to prove it in just a second. And actually the reason I'm not putting it on blue right now is because he loves when this collar is on because he knows we're about to go on a long walk. That doesn't mean anything. That only means that your dog is associating that and going on a walk, which is something that the dog likes. That's actually a good thing, but it doesn't really say anything about the dog liking or disliking the prong color. So listen to this. There's a study by Kwan and Bain. It's called Owner Attachment and Problem Behaviors Related to Relinquishment and Training Techniques of Dogs. Not surprising, more dogs were surrendered to a shelter by owners that didn't have a strong bond between them and their dogs. What can affect a bond like that? Well, punishing the dog. If a dog is afraid of you, he's not gonna have a good attachment to you, making it more likely for him to be surrendered to the shelter to begin with. Now check this out. Owners who used punishment-based colors reported less satisfaction with their dog's overall and leash walking behaviors. So you see, people who did use punishment-based colors actually complained more about their dog leash pulling. Not convinced? I have another one. A study by Dean Woody et al. It's called An Investigation into the Effectiveness of Various Professionals and Behavior Modification Programs with or Without Medication for the Treatment of Canine Aggression. In this study, there's actually a lot of things that showed how good training techniques help with the dog. But I'm not going to discuss everything, so again, links are down below, read the entire thing. 
they say, when employing behavior modification training techniques, response blocking was found to decrease probability for improvement when employed for treatment of fear aggression to other dogs and predatory aggression. That means that when the dog was prevented from doing the behavior, and that happens when you're using things like a prong collar, like a choke collar, like an e-collar, electric collar, shock collar, these tools, these techniques, will actually reduce the probability of getting better. And they specifically say for things like predatory aggression. In the original video I'm reviewing, the doctor is saying that one of the reasons to use it is to prevent your dog from chasing squirrels. That's predatory behavior. What did help? Well, improve dog owner communication, habituation, relaxation protocols, and short and frequent training session were the most consistently beneficial behavior modification techniques. I'm gonna admit it guys, I really was thinking and contemplating about making this video on prong collars because they are a controversial topic, but I'm a huge believer in safety for clients and their pets. So if pet owners knew about this prong collar, a lot of them may have been saved from situations that were dangerous, such as being pulled by their dog to get to another dog, pulled by their dog trying to get to a squirrel, um, things that can happen in a neighborhood with other dogs being around and that owner not being able to control their dog, and then being put in a situation that is really detrimental to that person and the animal. So now that we know that it actually doesn't really work according to the studies, and by the way, according to experience, if you ever had a big dog and maybe you still have a big dog and you're still using a prong collar, you know that they will still pull. In many of the cases, if it doesn't bother them that much, or if it just bothers them a little bit, they're still gonna pull you. Definitely during situations that they see a prey or they get excited because of other dogs or get afraid because of other dogs or people. It's not gonna work. And actually, it's not a controversial topic if you are keeping yourself up to date with continuous education, which clearly she didn't, because I doubt that you'll find even one specialist, one diplomate of the American College of Veterinary Behaviorists, and I'm assuming because of her accent that she's American, that will support the use of prong collars. Not convinced? Well, there's a study by Fernandez et al. called Do Aversive-Based Training Methods Actually Compromise Dog Welfare? A literature review. And it goes over the details and other studies that were done before. Now, sadly, there's no specific studies, as far as I know, about the use of prong collar versus something else. So usually they fall under the category of aversive training. Even though the writers of this study, and I agree, say that we need a lot more information, we need more studies, we need more what's called prospective studies, meaning that we actually test to see what happens and not just ask people what happened before. They do say, generally, the published studies suggest that the use of aversive-based methods is correlated with indicators of compromised welfare in dogs, namely stress-related behaviors during training, elevated cortisol levels, and problematic behaviors such as fear and aggression. So by using training techniques that are supposed to reduce aggression, you might actually make it worse when you're using aversive methods. Don't leave this collar on your dog all the time. It can cause skin infections around their neck and it's uncomfortable for them to wear. This needs to be a supervised tool with your pet to be used for walks and training. Or maybe don't use it at all. Use something that isn't dangerous to your dog. Use something that doesn't cause discomfort to your dog is make the prong collar a positive thing with your dog. Slowly introduce it to them on your walks or during training, but this isn't a substitute for the actual training. So when you're on walks with them and they're wearing the prong collar and they see a squirrel, you tell them no, leave it, before popping that collar and pinching them. So there's no substitute for actual training when using the prong collar. And even that advice is wrong. Even if you are using punishment, saying no, leave it, waiting, and then popping, then punishing the dog, not gonna be that effective. 
punishment needs to be done in a very specific way in order for it to even be slightly effective. And this is not the way. I really hope I convinced someone that using these methods is wrong. But if not, I'm willing to answer questions. Just be polite. If you're going to be rude, I'm not going to reply. I'm probably going to just hide you from the channel. And if you're bored, I made this video about a trainer, a famous trainer that uses a prong color. It really hurts to even watch it.